The brain is a majestic mystery. Everything we think and feel, every word and every smile, song we ever knew is held in the mysteries of our brain. We live in the sparks between brain cells. And to me, that's majestic. But it also means that when our brain goes wrong, our thoughts, our feelings, the songs and smiles we knew, they disappear forever. In uh, software, which I'm familiar with, when something goes awry, no problem. You debug it, run it again, no big deal. But in neuroscience, uh, the costs of errors and ways to explore them are much, much harder. Our next laureate has actually found the genetic underpinnings as well as therapeutic approaches to two different neurological diseases. And she is now applying those same kinds of techniques to Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. Uh, now let's uh, take a quick look at the film. I always find myself taking a risk. And I think when you take a risk, you're going where nobody has gone. That's when you really can open a new path. And, and for me, I discovered this about me in science. I love taking risks in science. Being with a parent and telling them your child has a degenerative neurological problem is the most devastating. I could not help but go home and cry about it. And I said, well, maybe if I go home to the lab and learn how to do research, maybe I can at least help rather than just make a diagnosis, give news, and walk away. So I decided if I could find the genetic causes of these diseases, maybe we can do something about them. Red syndrome is a childhood neurological disorder where the girls are born healthy. They will stop learning new skills and they will lose the skills they learn. It basically affects every part of the brain. When I had my daughter, my empathy to parents of children with neurological problem multiplied. So I think that drove me to really think of ways of helping. 16 years later, from the time I saw my first stress syndrome patient to the time we found the gene, people ask what kept you going. I would just say, I just knew that this got to be genetic and I'm not gonna give up till I found it. And with spinal cerebellar ataxia, a degenerative disease. We learned the gene that's mutated is called ataxin 1. And what the mutation does, it makes ataxin 1 accumulates ever so slightly more in the brain cells. And just having a little bit more of the protein in the brain cell is enough to wreak havoc and cause neurodegeneration. We were able to devise a strategy to find ways to lower the protein. We discovered genes that regulate the level of the protein, and some of them you can design an inhibitor. And I feel hopeful and optimistic because I'm actually touching that almost right now. So we started applying some of the same approaches to something far more common, like Parkinson and Alzheimer, which we are currently doing in the lab. I will not retire until I find a treatment for any of those diseases that I work on. To, dis to discuss the profound impact of Huda Zogby's work on his family, please first welcome Julio Cardinal. Well, our family condition took the lives of my mum, my grandmother, our father, and his fa father before that. His son, my great-grandfather, was born in 1878, and he passed on the disease to his daughter, my grandmother, who was born in 1917, and then to my mother and to myself. For over one century, my great-grandfather was blamed for the disease. And then, in 1993, Huda and Harry Orr discovered the gene that causes SCA1, a rare but fatal neurodegenerative disease, a genetic disorder 
which would just first meant to your children. In our case, with a 50% probability. So by the end of the 1990s, we were aware of this. And with new developments in embryo selection, it allowed me and many our families suffering from the condition to have, to have babies free of the disease. I today have three marvelous kids, thanks to Huda, uh, work and dedication. Lastly, I just want to say that the challenge that we have today is to have scientific breakthroughs reach all the people who are in need, both to find a cure, but also to change the future of our children. For discovering the causes of two genetic disorders, providing insight into the progress of neurodegenerative diseases. And uh, as a Russian immigrant, it gives me great pleasure to present this award to a Lebanese immigrant, uh, Dr. Huda Zogby. Huda Yaya Zogby was a medical student at American University of Beirut when civil war broke out, and she had to flee to America to continue her studies. As a young doctor, I found it heartbreaking to watch my patients, young and old, lose their lives to neurological diseases. So I turned to research for answers. And as you've heard today together with collaborators and trainees, we're charting these new paths towards viable therapies. It's really thrilling to understand, to begin to understand the language of life and to translate it to help mankind. I thank my husband, William, and my children, Rula and Anthony, for their unwavering support, and they share this honor with me tonight. Thank you. <laughs> 